Turn the power point on. What my God says. Second Chronicles 8 and 11. 18 and 11. And all the prophets prophesied say, so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. Can you imagine the contention that Micaiah was running into when 400 prophets of Baal were saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead. You'll prosper. But Micaiah said, You won't even come back home. Can you imagine the pressure that he was thinking when he went in before the two kings to tell him that? And this man that went and got him, the messenger, he said, speak like the other 400. Do like everybody else does. Now you know that don't get you in a good mess whenever you're going against God's word and do just like everybody else does. Do you think a vast number will make a difference on God and his word? No, what he says to do, we're supposed to do. That's what I'm trying to show us today. We got to do what God says to do. This first section of scriptures I'm going to speak on is bad decisions. Second Chronicles 18:14. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall del be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee, that thou say nothing but the truth to me, in the name of the Lord? And then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains, as sheep having no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master, let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? One spake after this manner, another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, one, the son of Chenanah, came near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak to thee? It was a bad decision that the king of Israel wanted to make Ahab because he had been evil and he'd been following these prophets of Baal. And he never even wanted to seek Micaiah out to hear what he had to say because he knew it was going to be bad. But think about it. Here he was seeking to a bad idol 
to make a good decision, and that don't work. When you seek to align a set of prophets, it don't matter if you gang up 400 to one of the Lord's. What the Lord says, that's what's going to happen. And why in the world would you take the time to seek to a bunch of prophets when you knew they were false prophets? How did this king know they were false prophets? Because he took the wicked queen Jezebel to wife, and she was of a, a people that were wicked before the Lord. They, they worshiped Baal. And the Bible had taught them in the law of the Lord. They weren't to take these wives of foreign nations because they just lead their hearts astray. And this man had his, a high number of people rooting for him and going for him and tell him, go up in peace, you'll win this battle. But Jehoshaphat said, is not there a, king, a prophet of the Lord here? Even one, just one prophet's all I'm asking for. And King Ahab said to him, Yeah, I got this old guy over here in the corner, Micaiah, but he always prophesies bad to me. So Micaiah came up and he mocked the king by saying, Go up, the Lord be with thee, because he was being a smart aleck. He was telling him, you know, Go ahead, do like all these other sorry prophets do. And the king knew he was mocking him. He said, how many times I tell you not to tell me anything but the word of the Lord. He didn't want to hear that mockery. He didn't want to hear him telling him the truth. He wanted nothing but a false prophecy like he had from them others. He wanted him to just be like the rest of them. But he knew Micaiah couldn't do it. Because Micaiah's whole gear in life was to do what the Father said do. To do and say what God told him to say. And then he told him, he said, The Lord, I saw him, and he's asking in heaven, How shall I tempt Ahab to go to Ramoth Gilead and fall? And the one, one uh, spirit or angel up in heaven and say, I'll do this or I'll do that and another one. And one of them said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. You've got to be careful. Some, some ministers will lead you on bad decisions. Anytime they lead you away from God's will and God's word, that's a bad decision. That's all there is to it. Whatever God says. I want God's will, don't you? I want to be told the truth. If I'm seeing a doctor and I've got a bad illness, I want him to tell me the truth. I don't care how bad it is, I want to know the truth. You can deal with the truth. You can't deal with a lie. You can face what you've got to face if you know where the end of it all is, if you're doing God's will. But if you, it don't matter how many people you get together. He got 400 people together to say, go up and do this. But it wasn't no good. There's another prophet I want to turn to, found in 1 Kings 19 and 7. And this is before the same king, the prophet Elijah. And you remember the story about him going up on the mountain and praying and God falling on that mountain with fire and burning up a sacrifice that was watered down and everything. And he said, the Lord be God that answers by fire. And God answered by fire. Well, this is just a short time after it. Uh, Jeremiah or uh, Elijah got discouraged because Jezebel was trying to kill him after the fire fell. He had killed all the prophets of Baal. And she was upset. So Elijah went out into the wilderness. And here's this where this story picks up. 1 Kings 19 and 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 
40 days and 40 nights under Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And said, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind and her earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the, his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very, very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return thy way to, wilder, to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou comest, anoint Hazel to be the king. And Jehu the son of Nimshi shalt thou... Uh, anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, well that's tricky, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Elijah, when he was so discouraged, after that big powerful revival meeting up on the mountain, where the fire of God fell, he was so discouraged because he felt like he was all alone. Even the children of Israel that was supposed to be worshiping God and loving God, even they had forsaken God and Jezebel was after him, wanting to kill him. So he went in the wilderness and he had a great journey to go on. How many know in here that our life has been a great journey? The only way we can go is in the strength of God's Word, feeding on Him. And Elijah found out he could go a lot further than he thought. And he went and anointed a king over Syria and anointed a king over Israel. And he anointed a prophet, which would be a prophet that would ask for a double portion of his spirit. So he had a great responsibility on his shoulders even though he had stood before all of Israel to make them know that he was a true prophet of God. And he anointed these men and they turned out to be the ones that helped turn Israel back for a while under serving God. And Elisha was a great prophet in the stead of Elijah. Now, Elijah's great journey ended on the day that Elisha was with him and Elisha saw Elijah taken up in a whirlwind and a fiery chariot came to pick him up and carry him on up into heaven. What a wonderful journey he was on and look how it ended. Now, if he just fell short in that wilderness where he was so despondent, he wouldn't have seen all them things, would he? And if we fail God and we turn away from our great journey, there's a lot of stuff we're going to miss seeing too. But if we'll hold true to God and do what he says, that's how we'll have our life eternal. Amen.
I've got to turn this equipment off and turn the, this next song on. Let me turn the video off right quick. I have to separate this like this so I have the smaller segments.